Hi everyone. Today I'm going to take you through the case study of Hindustan Unilever Limited on its environmental responsibility. Before moving to this case study, I would request everyone watching this video to subscribe 5 minutes learning channel in YouTube to get my recent case study video updates on time. Also this video is enabled with English subtitles for your better understanding. Now let's move to the case study. In the year 1988, Hindustan Unilever Limited, a market leader in the Indian FMCG sector, had set up a mercury thermometer factory in Kodekanal with 30 employees. This was an outcome of the global acquisition of Cheeseboro Ponds by Unilever Incorporation, which is the UK-based parent of HUL. The thermometer unit was part of Ponds India Limited, the Indian subsidiary of Cheeseboro Ponds. Increased awareness of health hazards associated with toxic substances like mercury that could harm the local ecology and the health of factory workers had led to this shift of such units from developed countries to the developing countries. Kodekanal, the pristine of hill station, in the Nilgiri mountain range of Tamil Nadu was selected because mercury, a very toxic substance, would not evaporate at cold temperature. This unit was a 100% export-oriented unit, set up at a time when the government of India was facing foreign exchange crunch. To overcome the hazards associated with the mercury-based thermometer factory, HUL had also started working on digital thermometers. For over a dozen years, the unit did good business, fulfilling the objective with which it was started. According to the Millennium Plan, Unilever's strategic decision was to exit non-core businesses. A decision to exit the thermometer business had already been made in the year January 2001. However, a crisis was brewing, which exploded two months later. In March 2001, there was a consignment of thermometers coming to India from USA. Greenpeace, the Canadian environment-focused NGO that had started its operations in India that year, raised an alarm saying that it was coming for ponds. Certain environmental activists in that region also claimed that several factory workers at Ponds had started complaining about health ailments around this time. HUL denied the charges. Meanwhile, Greenpeace found certain broken thermometers with traces of mercury in the scrapyards of Kodekanal and blamed HUL for that. Public interest group like the Tamil Nadu Alliance Against Mercury alleged that HUL had been disposing mercury waste without following proper protocols. The company rejected these allegations. One of the legal requirements for a 100% EOU is that nothing can go outside the factory, including the waste matter, unless it was cleared in the presence of the excise inspector. But Greenpeace and other groups persisted with its claim. Finally, HUL tested the samples found in the Kodekanal scrapyard. The findings shook the British-Dutch multinational consumer goods company that was proud of the presence of its 400 brands across 190 countries. Yes, those traces of mercury did belong to their manufacturing unit. It emerged that the glass scrap with residual mercury had been sold to a scrap dealer about three kilometers away from the factory in breach of the company guidelines and established procedures. Industrial missteps of this kind are unacceptable as they lead to health hazards for the masses. A single incident can dent the brand image and negatively affect the company's goodwill built over decades. Moreover, mercury is a powerful neurotoxicant 
which can not only damage internal organs but also seriously damage the local environmental ecosystem. In such a scenario, making quick amends to ensure the well-being of all concerned stakeholders at all costs is the only prudent strategy. HUL did just the same. It took a series of decisions to rectify, minimize, and in some case, nullify the effects of its mishap. First, it acted against those employees and third-party agencies who were responsible for this blunder. Though HUL had export orders, it stopped thermometer production in the factory with immediate effect. It took 7.4 tons of glass scraps with residual mercury from the scrapyard back to its factory for safe storage along with the soil beneath the scrap. Second, it decided to investigate the extent to which these breaches had occurred and undertake balancing of the mercury mass. To estimate the quantum of damage, HUL analyzed the manufacture and sale over the years and calculated the quantity of mercury used. Third, it got together a team of five doctors hailing from Chennai, Bangalore and Kodekanal for employees and all those who had been associated with the production process through a public advertisement for a medical examination. The doctors adopted a stringent US-based protocol and examined 255 people for any mercury-related health issues. It was found that nothing was wrong with them. This exercise was repeated in the subsequent month with the same outcome. In addition to this, HUL wrote to all doctors in Kodekanal, including those at the hospitals, to check if they had ever noticed a case of mercury poisoning or any similar symptom. All of them replied in with a negative note. HUL also got these reports validated by third-party experts from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Fourth, to estimate any environment-related issues, HUL looked for the best environmentalist in the world and identified the firm called URS Dames and More. The expert representative from URS took almost 2,000 samples of the soil, water, trees, plants, and aquatic life, not only within the factory, but even 20 kilometers away from the factory. The URS report concluded that Kodekkanal Lake had not been impacted by mercury, and those who had worked at the site had not suffered adverse health effects due to factory operations. However, there were a few hot spots within the factory that needed to be remediated. Subsequently, HUL shared the entire medical protocol and company findings with Greenpeace and invited their local leadership to be a part of the process. From HUL records, it emerged that it had in place an institutionalized system of monthly testing of urine samples of all employees. The company had 18-year record of all workers' urine samples and blood tests, which was also presented to workers local administration, and other civil society institutions. HUL invited the chief medical officer of the government of Tamil Nadu to undertake checking as well. They also validated the company's results. Fifth, HUL returned all mercury-bearing materials to USA. The consignment consisted of 290 tons of materials and including glass scrap with residual mercury, semi-finished and finished thermometers, effluent treatment plant waste, and elemental mercury. They were packed under the supervision of Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board officials and witnessed by local NGOs. The material reached New York in May 2003. As per the accepted arrangements, Bethlehem Apparatus Incorporation would remove the mercury from the thermometers and then dispose them appropriately, a facility not available in India. This crisis highlights two aspects. The first is the extreme set of risk associated with environmentally hazardous process and products, especially in developing economies 
that may not be fully equipped to handle miscalculations and erroneous discharge of environmentally hazardous material. Corporations of this size and stature of HUL cannot afford to overlook any loopholes in the implementation of mandatory processes. Secondly, it reflects the company's approach to crisis management that went through several layers of administrative, bureaucratic, and legal processes. This contrasted with much bigger environmental crisis that India witnessed at Union Carbide's pesticide factory in Bhopal, where nearly 16,000 people died due to the industrial disaster in December 1984. It took 15 long years from the time the industry mishap occurred at the HUL factory in Kodekhanal till the time of the final settlement with employees to the satisfaction of the beneficiaries, local authorities, legal system, and civil society representatives. All through an immense amount of communication, documentation, and implementation of remedial process was delinquently undertaken to handle the crisis in a matured fashion. The way in which this crisis was managed, despite enormous hostility from civil society institutions, environmental activists, political groups, and certain locals with vested interest, is an important milestone in Hetchewell's journey. Thank you everyone for watching this video. See you soon with another important case study. For more such case studies, please subscribe 5 Minutes Learning Channel in YouTube.